Hey guys, Jake here. We are at Red Rocks Church, and this is John Clark, production director at Red Rocks Church. He's going to give up, us guys? a tour of the multi-camera setup they are using for their church online and live streaming. Come on in. This is our uh, this is our broadcast site right now. It's our Littleton campus, and. Uh, We've kind of made some tweaks for COVID, but uh, this is sort of our main our main deal. We'll start it off with camera one. Yeah, so John will kind of walk us through basically their camera plot of all the different cameras. They've got kind of their different purposes. We'll also cut in some of the program feed from a service so you guys can see the different uh, perspectives, perspectives from each camera. Um, and then we'll talk about just the nitty gritty pieces of gear that make this setup possible. So yeah, walk us through the plot. Yeah, so this is camera one. Uh, it's kind of our only camera on sticks and it stays on sticks the entire message. It's basically like the house tracking camera. So it's really the camera, Tally's always plugged into it. If there's a pastor, he's always looking at this camera, um, kind of when he's addressing the church. Any worship leaders doing a charge in the middle of a worship set, look at this camera. And it's basically the main steady camera, house cam, camera one. It has a 70 to 200 servo lens on it. Uh, and that's a Marshall monitor there. And, uh, and it's basically, they're all C200s. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of just a pretty static setup. We're not looking for a bunch of camera movement on this, but in the middle of a worship set, we'll normally kind of have the op sort of float with it a little bit. Um, so that, that to us kind of means like it's a little bit of movement uh, up and down, side to side, because a good bulk of our line cut during worship are handheld cameras. So we, we don't want it to be like a handheld camera and then it cuts to something that's totally static uh, when, when we take camera one. Uh, but its basic function is just tracking Tell a us teacher. More about some of the rigging around it. Like, yeah, so yeah. maybe start a tripod and then the tripod head, and then the um, focus pulling and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's Sachler or Satchler, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but the F FSB8, and we like it because this one has the a bunch of different, uh, it's locked now, but it, it has a, a few different uh, settings in terms of firmness in the, in the drag. Uh, so it, it's one through five, basically, that we get on panning and tilting there. Um, it says Zacuto base plate, the Marshall monitor, C200. These are the uh, these are just the the Canon servos that match the 70 to 200 servo lens, um, and we love them. They're great. They have a they, f they feel really great. Focus, uh, zoom. Sometimes we'll run. Canon has a really great dual pixel autofocus, um, and it depends on the lens that we have on it. But often we'll run autofocus for a pastor. On this one, we don't because in the event that something funky happens with focus, our stage is pretty busy, a bunch of people on it. Um, and, and based on the composition of the shot, sometimes focus will pull to someone we don't want it to. So this is kind of the bailout. Uh, focus is all, is all manual on this. Um, yeah, so that's, that's camera one. Do all the cameras have tally lights on them? Yeah, y no. So this is really the, we, we've set it up so that um, in our handhelds and based on the camera, sometimes we just don't want another cable tethering the camera down. So for this one, yes, this is the main camera that we want a pastor or a worship leader, like they need to know when this camera is live because this is the one that they'll really address. And so we coach them, if you want to address the church and really like look at the camera, then look down, look at this camera um, and 
so because of that, we run Tally on this camera, but we won't on our handhelds because there's no reason really for, for our pastors to be in the middle of a line cut, like looking over or worship leaders looking over at a handheld camera. Uh, is a Tally light uh, part of like the Ross system or is it like a third party piece of gear that you yeah, add to it? Yeah, it integrates inside of Ross for us. Um, the actual networking is wired through a switch, but yes, it integrates with Ross. And so it's picking up exactly what camera is hot inside of Ross. So that means that any, any camera that has a tally on the front here uh, will also show tally on the Marshall monitor. But then there are a few cameras here. Actually, this is the only camera at this site that has tally hooked up to it. No, we, we hook our camera two up and I can show you that next. But for camera two, it's dual purpose. So sometimes it's, it's in worship and it won't have a tally on it. And when it's in teaching, we'll plug the tally into it. And so that way, that's kind of our main like knee up shot for teaching. And so between this camera and camera two, those are the two cameras that the teacher really needs to look at or address based on what's live. So those are the two tallies that we give them. Dope. So that's camera one. Anything yeah. else about this one or move on to camera two? No, that's basically two. it. I'll try not to trip and <laughs> drop Yeah, my camera. camera one, this, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty staple for us. We have these at every site. Oh, um, what about this platform? Do you guys have like, is there, is there a way that that prevents uh, shaking on the tripod? Yeah. Cause I've heard that that can be an issue sometimes. Yeah, it does. So we make sure and not build our, so we split it up. So it's actually two platforms. One is the one I'm standing on and this is the one that the camera is on. And we do that because we don't want the, the op to like kick something or move around or shift their weight um, and then to like bump the camera. So this one is kind of free and independent. You can see I can like move this whole riser around and it's not actually messing with the camera. This is definitely not pretty right now. But then this one is uh, the, the riser that the actual camera's on. But we also make sure uh, to when we build them to not have like full hard surfaces because then you get a ton of base or low end build up in there and they'll kind of like shake, rattle the camera. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just a bunch of two by fours built and, and it has uh, basically just this little like scrim felt thing instead of an actual wall. That way the low end can pass through without shaking the camera. Cool. Boom, camera one. So camera two is actually over here and we run this one dual purpose. This is kind of our COVID set up, but we also do this for, uh, we did this even before COVID. It's just kind of, we've gotten a little more lax with the cables, but during message, this is how this camera set up during the message. And this is a, a C200 with a 70 to 200, but this is the 2.8 telephoto lens, not the servo lens. And so this one doesn't actually have servos on the grip. This op is actually just using their left hand here um, and, and dialing in focus as well as zoom. We will keep this camera in autofocus for the majority of the message or our teaching portion. Um, and then we'll plug in a tally there for that section, but then the moment that we get into worship, we'll actually pull this camera off and we'll run this Teradek here. And this person is actually wearing a, a, a easy rig and they're all wireless. Their comm is coming through the ClearCom app. So they're not actually wired in on comm, although th this is here in case they want to plug in. It's a little more clear through an actual ClearCom belt pack. So. They'll run worship through the app on their phone and then uh, and they'll walk around, be completely wireless. But then the moment that they'll put the camera in, uh, most of them still wear the easy rig, but they'll just turn it around. And then that way they actually have wired connection to both. And so they'll, they'll op the message this way. And then once they get into worship, pull the camera off, fire up the Teradek and then, uh, and keep cruising. Awesome. And one question, because like 
this is a 7200, mm -hmm. and then the other one we saw on the other camera was a 7200 Cine lens. For those who are kind of new to the lens world, yeah, what's the what's the advantages of that the cinema lens you had on the other camera versus the t this regular, I guess, telephoto photo <laughs> lens? Yeah. So the reason the reasons we use both this is a cheaper lens than the actual servo lens, and it's faster glass, so it has an f 2.8 f-stop. And while, while the, the Cine lens has, it's a T4.5. So there's some benefit there in that you can, you can really open the lens up and get a tight depth of field. Also, it's kind of budget friendly in that it's basically half the price uh, or even a little less than a Cine lens. Now, mm -hmm. the, this has a couple different settings for autofocus. Uh, manual focus and a couple different stabilizer modes, but I do think that the the Cine lenses are better in terms of stabilization. So we use Cine lenses on anything that's actually moving a lot. Um, so for instance, dolly shots, our dactyl shot, which we'll get to, those have Cine glass on them. That way the stabilization's a little bit better, but it's a cheaper lens. Arguably, it, it, it in ways kind of looks better if you really like a tight uh, uh, f-stop or tight depth of field. It's a great lens to go with. This there. is the same tripod and head yeah. as the other yep. one. Okay. Yep. All around, all the tripods are this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. All right. That's camera two. Boom. Camera two. Then we'll uh, we move over to camera three, which is actually up in the air right now. It's our dactyl camera. That's a, that's a dactyl camera made by Defy. And so it's a C200 on the, as the actual body. It's a 18 to 80 servo lens. It's on a Ronin. And it's that right there is the cadence made by Defy. So the cadence is the actual like track and cabling yep. system? Yeah, the cadence is the actual sled. Okay. And, and, uh, and then we have our op. We normally just have a ladder that we put right here to access it and do batteries, switch, stuff like that. Um, but then our actual op sort of camps out right here next to camera one. This is the Teradek for the, uh, for the dactyl. Um, so yeah, they kind of hang out here. We run the Nucleus Fizz on it. So this is how we wirelessly control focus, iris, zoom. And then this is the actual sled control. Uh, and then this is the Ronin. So the op, uh, we, Cadence, Cadence ha, Defy has these foot pedals that they, that they gave us with the Cadence. That's a technically like a kind of upgrade thing mm -hmm. that I think that they sort of rigged for us. Defy is awesome in making that. So our ops will actually use the foot pedals to make the, to make the sled slide down the line or back. So they have a right and a left. Mm -hmm. So, or they can use this if they like, but the foot pedals are awesome because then they can use their foot pedals and have, and be actually controlling the sled as well as the Ronin because they'll be tilting the camera as they, as they slide down the line. So that's how this is set up. A cool. couple different monitors. One is just a little better for telling focus and stuff like that. All right, so folks at home, the Defy is what makes it go back and forth on the cable. Yes. Sled, so that's yes. what it's called. Yep. This is the focus pulling for the mm -hmm. lens. Yep. And that is the Ronin control. Control, yep, exactly. Okay. It's technically, we're on the Defy is the like manufacturer. We have the cadence, like okay. sled. There's okay. a few different options of sled. Cadence is the cheapest or most lightweight one. And you, we were talking before how these, um, the sled and cable setup is yeah. kind of a what you know. It's not necessarily cheap, but like of the options out there, you can do cabling, but you can also put like tracks in the ceiling and stuff like that, right? Yeah. If you want yeah. a moving camera, but this is like a little bit more reasonably priced. Yes, exactly. There's tons of different ways to get in like an aerial shot. We absolutely love this because it's it's by far the cheapest option I've seen. That. Yeah, especially for the price, because you can make that line. The line is the the cheap part. It's basically like climbing rope. So this is actually kind of small for our for our uh, 
building. I mean, this auditorium is kind of a, on the smaller side compared to other venues that use something like this. Normally, Defy will go into arenas and string that thing across like an entire, like on our, um, on our last uh, live album, we were in Magnus Arena, and so we had one of these that went across the entire arena. So it's basically, Defy has this special rope, but it's not super expensive to have a longer one or a shorter one. We can pull that down and put it into any of our campuses. So it's really versatile. We could, if we were gonna do a shoot uh, off-site, we could bring it with us. Whereas if you were to go with a more expensive option, it's like a track bolted into your ceiling, kind of hard to move that around. Awesome. Yeah. That's camera three. Camera three. What's four? Camera four is actually over here on stage. And it sort of handles the whole left side, uh, house left, stage right side of the stage. And it basically camps out right in here. And it films the drums here some back line as well as some reverse shots of uh of worship leaders there and so we've we we actually had a whitely drum enclosure that we put the drums in uh, but we've been recording some stuff for red rocks worship mm -hmm. so we uh we've pulled it we've pulled the drums out for that um, and we're kind of digging it right now especially when there's not a bunch of people in our room it, uh, it's a way for us to get a really, a really clean capture of the drums without a bunch of reflections. So the op now will kind of, kind of has room to film all the way around this, whereas they didn't before. Uh, but the op will kind of, the op will, will roll anywhere. Um, this, this is a 24105 on a C200, and so it's, it has a fair amount of zoom in it, which well, we that's love. Actually what I have on this on camera. You, yeah, exactly. So, so that's the... That's 105. Yep. 24. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And so then they, they'll, they'll kind of walk out here sometimes and film some of the worship, some of our worship leaders. Sometimes our worship leaders will kind of move up and down the stage. They'll be able to film that. Sometimes they'll peek out here and film the drummer from this angle. Sometimes they'll uh, film the drummer here. Now, recently, we've been sort of filming our bass guitar player from from this angle because often our bass player and guitar player are kind of interacting and that's cool so we try to capture that but that actually so there's no tally on that so that's just literally we'll run a battery on the c200 an sdi cable and a comm cable mm. so that's the only thing that this op has like that they're tethered to mm -hmm. the 24 to 105 i mean you're on it right now that's that's a pretty light set up in Canon, so we don't have an easy rig for that uh, because we find that it's actually kind of, it's just easy for them to go handheld. Yeah. No problem. That's camera four. Do they use stabilization on it? Yeah, they like we'll, we'll run, almost every one of our shots will run image stabilizer. We found, sometimes I guess if you really want that handheld movement thing, uh, you can pull the stabilizer off. Mm -hmm. But to us, sometimes that feels like it's unintentional camera movement. Yeah. Whereas when we put the stabilizer on, they're kind of just like, like floating. A lot of our ops will sort of use their, their body a little bit to sort of like float around the image. And so with the stabilizer on, that kind of ensures that there's not a bunch of like micro handheld things going on. And um, to demonstrate to you guys at home right now, I'll turn yeah. it off on this lens. You see... I actually think I have sensor stabiliza stabilization as well on it, so it In won't Canada. be as bad. But now when I turn it on, you'll notice like it's it's really impressive how yeah. well the lens stabilization works. Totally, and you have to kind of watch the way. Sometimes that can be if you're really making minor minor adjustments. And like if you're a really great handheld op and you can just like hold that thing dead steady. If you move a little bit, sometimes because of the stabilization, it'll jump a little bit. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, our ops always have a little bit of something going on. Um, and so it's not really an issue. Dope. We dig it. Cool. Boom. That's camera four. The camera five is over here. Camera five is a handheld. 
in camera five will, it kind of depends. Sometimes we'll switch the lens up, but it's a, it's a C200 and they will have an easy rig. They will be on a Teradek and uh, they'll run the ClearCom app on their phone. So they'll run like their AirPods or um, any, they'll basically just hook up into their phone for comms and they don't actually need to really talk on comms. So it's not a really great comm experience, but it's enough for them to know when their camera's live. So that, that enables them to get all wireless and it saves us some money on free speak through ClearCom. So it works for us. They'll, they'll kind of, this camera, because it's wireless, is moving a little bit more than camera four. So it'll come all the way back here. It'll shoot uh, keys. It'll shoot guitars, which are normally stationed right here. Um, it'll sneak all the way up and it'll film down our, our worship leaders. Um, sometimes it'll even, he'll even come down here and film up on our worship leaders. Uh, we've had sometimes during the message, we'll have them just, just camp out and sit and sort of, sort of film up on the pastor. So yeah, they're, they're moving a good bit. Um, we'll even sometimes have them uh, run up into the kind of and wrap around a worship leader if it works in our line cut in a specific moment or same thing with guitars. But yeah, nice. camera five, most of the time, a 24 to 105, sometimes a 70 to 200, just kind of depends. Dope. Where do we go from here? Camera five, then we move to camera six. And this is our dolly shot. This is a C200 with an 18 to 80 cine servo lens, but we're not actually using the servo function of it. We're really using it because 18 to 80 is the perfect zoom for this camera. It's like the focal depth is perfect and we love the image stabilization of the 18 to 80. So the op will actually manually sit here and adjust their focus and and zoom. And uh, this is a camera goat. Actually, that's the brand of the Dolly is camera goat. And I think they're actually local for us in Boulder. Um, and we, we love this Dolly. A lot of dollies, you'll, you'll buy them and you kind of like screw the pieces together. This one was all built just for our actual room and so I think it's 14 feet exactly and it's just one long stick of steel rather than them being screwed together so we find that it's a little bit more stable that way and at some of our sites uh, we'll we'll actually like build a we used to build a platform and set this on a platform but we've actually found that the the steel that comes uh, with the camera goat is, is really nice because it's solid and it also enables uh, base, like the low end to kind of pass through without rattling the camera. So it's solid and it enables, uh, it enables the op to, uh, to move pretty freely quickly. We can tear it down or move it. We had it over stage right house left for a little bit during COVID. We've moved it back here because we kind of like to see um, a slide across the the center of the stage and our staff, we're filming our staff in the room right now during COVID, but, but normally the, like the pit is kind of full of people. So we love that look of it flying across the center of the stage. So this one, the same thing, there's no tally on it. Uh, it's, this, it's the same thing as the other cameras, just a battery and an SDI cable. We could wire it in with power, but we actually like um, to minimize the amount of cables coming to it. So we'll run, we'll run the battery pack there. Cool. Boom. That's it, that's most of them. Most of, most of the cameras, so they're really the steady cameras are camera one, camera six, and camera three are basically all steady in yeah. worship. Um, what about the camera, I thought Carson was on a camera, another one. That? Yeah, so so w th this is our like production and broadcast capture. Sometimes we'll have some some of our creative team come in and they'll film content for social media 
okay. uh, separate from our like service capture. Yep. Uh, but this is like our main, our main service capture that's that's actually inside of the broadcast. But yeah, we have tons. There's a bunch of people running around with taking pictures for social media and filming little little clips of the message and stuff like that. Yep. So five, then five angles total. Yeah. Well, no, six. Or six. Three of them are are steady oh, yeah, in the six, sense yeah. that they're like smooth. It'd be one camera six and camera three are are like really smooth movements, and then camera two, camera four, and camera five are the handhelds. And two, I didn't actually really show you. When camera two, two is like this for the message, but during worship, this one will be wired, or actually no, this one's wireless, and, uh, and they'll be able to kind of move, they'll come all the way down here and film up on the worship leaders, or sometimes they'll, uh, sometimes they'll be back here, uh, like filming through the crowd a little bit, or even capturing some of the crowd. So, nice. that's it. All right, so to recap, all the cameras, you've got camera number one right there. We've got camera number two, which is stationary and mobile. We've got camera number three, which is the dactyl yep. right above us. We've got camera number four. That was the stage right over here by the drums. Yep, stage right, house left, drums. And then, then camera five, five over, over there. there. Yep. And then camera six is the this guy? Yep. Yep. And that's it. Sweet. So oh. let's go let's go look at the video room real quick just cause, yeah. so everybody kind of gets an idea where it's all headed. This is our video room and setup. Might be a little messy. It normally looks like this. We have it dark for during service, uh, but do you want that on? Yeah, well, you'll, you guys will see B-roll of what this looks yeah. like during service, but yeah, video, the Ross video switcher, yeah. ProPresenter computer. Um, this is for the- Resolume LED wall. Resolume for the LED wall. Yep. And then and this- Rack for encoder and stuff like that. Yeah, this is the, uh, this is, Resi or living as one. They used to be called living as one. These are our decoders. So we're not actually using them now, but when we're we have all of our campuses running, we'll live stream out of this campus, and then if no one's preaching here specifically, they'll play back their own recording through the decoders right there. So that's that's there in case we have a, a individual person who's dropping in cues live or for a video director to just reach over and hit play when it's that time in the message so we don't need to have two volunteers nice but we can if we want this is the uh kind of we call it video ops really it's all recording we'll manage uh our stream from here and they'll kind of in some ways sort of assistant direct they're looking for focus and exposure we actually don't run any uh shading we do have, uh, you can get the, you can get Canon comes, they have these little RCV 100s if you really, if you like that workflow of being able to, of being able to shade every, every camera on the fly. We want them to be as mobile as possible. So our ops do the shading. And for the most part, we've figured out, hey, camera two, you normally stay within you know, ISO 500 or 640 to 800 and based on the shot, like they know when I'm filming this thing, I have this ISO and when I'm filming this thing, I have this ISO. So for the most part, it's not like they really need to come up with exposure um, or at least expose the camera. Like we've sort of done that work for them. They just need to remember what their settings are and depending on the camera, that changes for camera five, which is stage left, house right over on the keys and filming the worship leader that camera is is changing exposure a bunch just based on the if there's front light or if there's something dark over in a guitar player uh, but we almost always will change the iso not the f-stop so that way the actual aperture of the lens is staying true regardless of the moment in the song, if it needs to be a little darker or a little brighter. All of our steady cameras, we don't touch the shading on. So from worship to teaching 
uh, they'll stay the entire, the entire service. And then in lighting, we just make sure that we light worship and our like message or an MC block so that the camera exposure doesn't need to change. And so for that's camera one, camera three, and camera six. And so they, they won't change exposure for the whole service. It's just the handhelds because sometimes, you know, they'll go film a, uh, someone in the, in the audience worshiping. So that, but we we're, we're on comm here and then, and we'll kind of monitor that and say, Hey, that's a little dark. That's a little bright. And then they'll sort of adjust it from there. And then this person also makes sure everything's recording, make sure everything's working and streaming all that. Awesome. Let's talk, let's go back over here for a change of scenery. And let's talk a little bit more about your guys' camera choice going with the C200s yeah. versus all of the other um, options that we have for cameras these days, especially because you could do you kind of more traditional broadcast cameras, but C200s are more yeah. cinema <laughs> documentary type cameras, I guess you, get, you could say. Um, totally. Let's get by a C200 right here. All right, so why, why these cameras? Yeah, the C200 is a cinema camera and it integrates really well into a production environment. This is super simple, an SDI cable. And for the price, this gets us into the Canon Digital Cinema EOS line for, for really inexpensive. And to be honest, it looks great. Um, you get a ton of dynamic range out of a cinema camera, specifically this one. Uh, we love the Super 35 millimeter crop um, really it's just a it's just a solid camera we do run it in c log three and then the camera has built in a bt 709 lut so if you're on a canon camera like this running the camera actually in the setting c log three gets you the best color representation as well as dynamic range you could also run the camera in a bt 709 setting, but by running it in C-Log3 and then just applying the LUT, that buys us a little better color, a little bit more dynamic range. But basically, uh, we love the camera because it's a cinema style camera, really affordable, and we love the look of Canon, the color representation of Canon. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I'm filming this video on a C300 Mark III. Which is also a great camera. To be That one just came out. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of that's if I was doing it over, I might just buy C300 Mark threes, but I mean, also for the budget, um, we, we have six C 200s. We might only have been able to have four C300 Mark threes for yeah. the same price. Yeah. So to us, it's like at the end of the day, we need that cinema look and we're going to hook up an SDI cable to it. And so in that sense, if I were trying to hit budget, I would rather have six C200s than four C300 Mark III's, even though it's a great camera. Well, because it, this is for just live broadcast and those cameras can do 4K, I don't think they're going to be obsolete anytime soon. Totally. Even, even though they've been around for, what, three, almost four years now? Yeah, totally. Um, I still think they're great, especially now. Well, the Canon new C70 came out, so yeah. I don't know, if you guys are listening, check out the C70 because that's a similar price point as a C200. Yeah. That could be a dope um, yeah. broadcast cam camera as well. But Yeah, look at the yeah. functionality. You'll, you'll get some different things. And based on your actual church, you might find, man, we really need that RCV100 control so that you have a shader mm -hmm. who's, who's shading all of, all of the cameras to a lot of churches. That's a big deal. Because I found that a lot of churches actually shoot their message and their worship at different exposures because of the lighting in the room, mm -hmm. which personally seems like a headache to me, but that's just the way that we've built this is to just all be one exposure. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that might be specific to your church. Maybe you have windows or, or you don't have enough punch in key light for a teacher. Tons of different reasons that would make you need to switch. Um, you can still totally do it in a C200. A C500 is great too. A C700. Really what would be the biggest step up I think if you were to go for, with something better than a C200, get something with Genlock because the C200, the C200 doesn't have Genlock, whereas your C300 Mark, Mark III there 
has Genlock. So that could cut down some latency for you. Nice. And you guys are filming 29.97 yeah. for a frame rate. Eventually going to get to the place where you can yeah. change that on the fly. 29.97 for yep. teaching, 23. Yeah, so we're using music. a... Yeah, we're using a Ross Carbonite Black there is the switcher panel, and it actually doesn't have a 1080p 2398 setting in the switcher. A lot of Blackmagic switchers, 4A, there's a bunch of switchers out there that have them. Ross did just release a firmware update that gave us 2398 in the switcher, but that's on the, car, the Ultra frame, which is actually at our Park Meadows site. This site has a black, and... So because of that, not because of that, that's one of the reasons that we'll run 1080p 2997 right now. Um, honestly, Can Canon just came out with a firmware that enables you to shoot in 5994, like have your actual video clock and your video system for broadcast in 5994. So we could run 1080p 5994. And then like VFR or variable frame rate, the camera into 24 or 30, 2398 or 2997. So that way your whole system's talking in 5994, but you're only showing, you know, you could get that 24 look for worship. So it's really cinematic and lots of motion blur, but then you could switch to 60 or 30 based on that point in your message. We actually already do that at some of our other sites. So yep. lots of great options through Canon there. Awesome. We just got really nerdy there with Genlock yeah, super, and clocks and super all those nerdy. things. I'll just pretend to understand it all. But <laughs> no, thanks, man. This was really yeah. cool. I think it's really helpful for folks to kind of just see it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, first person view perspective. Um, if you did, smash the like button and just make make John really proud and smash that like button. <laughs> Make it make it blue. Um, I'm gonna link his tech tour we did for Red Rocks Church as well, uh, because we actually did it at their different campus, but very similar systems. You guys can check all that out if you want to learn more about their AVL that they've got set up here. I'll probably link uh, John's Instagram account below as well, so you can spam him with a bunch of questions and stuff like that. I actually deleted it. The times are crazy, guys. I deleted Instagram. Okay, so well that's that's a. Just put your questions in the comments it. here. Maybe <laughs> maybe John will stop by the video for, we'll get to it. for comments. But I, actually, I hope the one reason we want to do this video is he was getting a lot of questions about how they're producing their yeah. online services here at Red Rocks because yeah. it's really quality. If you guys haven't seen it, go to Red Rocks Church, check out the online services. Um, really, really just top-notch, just everything. The music's amazing, preaching's amazing. But then when you have production gear like this to really just convey it, to the world to the best of your ability it's really powerful and impactful as well so yeah. all thanks to this guy so thanks for watching guys yep. hit the thumbs up button thank you john appreciate you man see you guys see you oh we just freaking crushed that jakey <laughs> one take wonder right that was one take was there anything no i'm, I'm literally just gonna let the whole thing roll i'll put the b-roll on where it makes yeah it for stuff but it's like i think people will enjoy that off the cuff like yeah let's just follow john around for dude that we did that for like almost 35 minutes